Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. I'm up and at it early today, and I'm happy. I'm excited because I'm going to Paris. I found a bus ticket that I'm gonna take. I couldn't find a way home, so don't do this at home, but I'm actually, I found like an organized form of hitchhiking online where somebody is driving from like Paris to um, passing through here, I guess, and they're gonna give me a ride home. Um, but what we're doing today is, like I said, we're doing 75% of my bucket list. We're gonna go visit who I think is the most brilliant mind, the most interesting person. He was also hilarious, he was an idiot, he was everything. And I think, I just, I, I've always wanted to go see his grave and where he basically lived out the last sad days of his life. Today we're gonna go explore the life of Oscar Wilde. And like I said, Oscar Wilde to me is, I wouldn't say he's an idol or anything like that, but hes he had a gift for saying things and phrasing things in the most perfect way. And I think I've just always loved a tragedy and his life was exactly that. It was in all ways a tragedy. And in many ways all brought on by himself. But today we're gonna go see his grave. We're gonna go see the last hotel where he lived. And God willing, I get there in time. We're gonna go in because there's actually a museum in Paris that has an exhibit to Oscar with some of his personal belongings and things like that. I don't know if I'll be able to film in there, but it's worth a shot. Days with Jordan the Lion honoring Oscar Wilde begins now. I'm not going to complain about having to walk this way to get to the bus station. Wow. All right, as shady as this sounds, about five people have told me the bus picks up right here, even though there's no sign for it or anything. We shall see. <laughs> this will be an adventure. All right, 20 minutes late, but it's here. Alright gang, we are officially in Paris. We are in the underground. I'm walking over to our first stop for the vlog today. And of course, you notice I'm wearing a different pair of sunglasses. Well, special vlog, what I consider to be my number one of all time vlogs that I've wanted to do, had to do them for somebody. Now, Michelle Dalton was the only one who had sunglasses coming to her and she actually said, you know what Jordan? Why don't you choose whatever you want to do for them, and then I want to donate them, and you can sell them or whatever you want to do, give them away, and put it right back into your channel. So we'll figure out some way to do that, or if she has a suggestion, we'll do that. But these will be sunglasses that I deem to be very special. Well, this is not exactly the cleanest city I've ever been to, but now, when, Oscar Wilde is discussed, I think, far too often. He's summed up in a sentence or a paragraph. I don't think you could sum this guy up in a book, a novel, or a series of books. He was as complex as they get. You see, Oscar Wilde's father was widely considered in Ireland maybe the foremost father of surgery. He was a brain surgeon even back in the early 1800s. His mother was a nationalist poet and was widely considered to be the poet of the people of Ireland. So she had a larger than life personality, very witty, very funny, very outgoing. His father was pretty much a genius and would end up using a lot of his money to open a hospital to take care of people that were too sick and too poor to be able to be taken care of. However, Oscar's father, even when he married Oscar's mother, had had children before, he would go on to have uh, many side flings in front of his mother. Oscar would see this growing up and realize that his mother saw nothing wrong with it. This would end up becoming kind of one of the character flaws that Oscar would write about in his writing, in his plays, depict in his novel, and would end up living out and seeing to his own demise. That little orange thing over there is artwork by my favorite uh, street artist, Space Invader. So by anyone's account, Oscar was a genius in the making. He would grow up being surrounded by his two brilliant parents and all of their brilliant friends. Even in high school, he would be awarded medals in Greek, 
and would be awarded a few scholarships, one to Trinity, and then later on to Oxford, where he would edit the paper. He would go on to become the editor of Woman's World, if you can believe it. Now it's right around these years in his college days that he really starts to formulate who he is and what he will be known for. Um, Oscar becomes basically a full-blown dandy. Almost many would describe him a male version of his mother. He would grow his hair out kind of long, about chin length almost. He would go on to wear uh, fur coats, silk uh, clothing. He would have uh, lavender wallpaper. Everything about him at that time was wanting to be surrounded by beauty. Um, his interior design, which nobody was really caring about at those days. His, his apartment was elaborate in college and he always wore a lily in his lapel every single day. He just, his whole goal for life at this time was to make the name Oscar Wilde known and to be as big and exuberant as he had to be to do it. In fact, one of his ways of doing this would, he would uh, show up at one of Sarah Bernhardt's appearances and throw lilies at her feet so that he would get in the paper for that, causing a scene. Now Oscar would go on to be so successful at making a spectacle of himself that the playwrights, Gilbert and Sullivan actually ended up hiring him to come to the United States and do a series of lecturing tours to kind of give an example to the Americans of what the humor was supposed to be like in their upcoming play, Patience. And uh, of course, once he got here, he made a spectacle everywhere he went. And a very common misconception I feel like is always uh, attached to Oscar uh, kind of starts happening around this time. Uh, he ends up kind of experimenting with the idea of the beauty of men. Um, like I said, he was so much like his mother. He had this, this um, oversensibility to women. And mainly he would just describe it as a vice. And it was so much of a vice that right around the time he was finishing up his American tour and going back to London, he met a woman, Constance, fell in love, and they got married. And it wasn't just a sham marriage. If you read their love letters, they were both head over heels in love and would go on to have two sons together. Now, by all accounts, Oscar was a great father to his two sons. However, that little bit of his father started peeking out, and Oscar was a man who believed mainly in two things in life. Life was meant to be lived dangerously and on the edge, and it was meant to be lived as beautiful and exorbitant as you could make it. And so he would start to have an affair. This would be something that he would do out in public, and his wife would stay with him and she would somehow understand, but uh, Oscar would go out and indulge in these experiences, and then later write about them in things like the picture of Dorian Gray, where he explains this painter paints a picture of his friend who he finds so beautiful, and when the friend Dorian Gray sees it, he falls so in love with the painting that he says, if only, if only the painting, if only I could stay like this painting where the painting never aged. And so he makes a deal to give away his soul in order to have the painting age and that Dorian never would. And through that, you end up seeing through the painting Dorian's true soul and the ugliness of his soul eventually. And so part of the reason I say that Oscar was so fascinating to me as a person is that if you look at his writings, you soon see that he outlines the de decline of all of his characters. And in almost every way that he will outline it, he ends up living it out himself. He ends up almost in every situation has a villain in there that betrays him, almost as though he needed that in his life in order to fulfill the life's purpose. And he would eventually get that. And so at this time, the name Oscar Wilde is known all over the world. He's considered to be one of the greatest minds, one of the greatest thinkers of his day. And he starts a relationship or a fling with a young boy that he would call Bosey, Lord Alfred Douglas, whose father was the Marcus of Queensbury. 
So at this time, Oscar and Alfred are pretty much making this as obvious as possible, and they're walking into operas arm in arm, causing a scene. Uh, and I would describe Oscar as an as an Andy Kaufman type. Many of the things he did were literally just to get a reaction. He only wanted to see people's reaction to it. And uh, that was part of the excitement for him. And so he would do that. And it turned out that Lord Alfred Douglas, Bosey, and his father had a very tumultuous relationship. And they would end up throwing Oscar in the middle of it as the pawn in this game. At this time, the Marcus of Queensbury would write Bosey a letter and then also publish one publicly accusing Oscar Wilde of being a sodomite and says that if they're ever seen again, he's going to start publicly making accusations um, to besmirch Oscar Wilde's name. And when Alfred Douglas Bosey basically says, we're not gonna stop, he goes out the Marcus of Queensbury, and starts defaming Oscar Wilde's name. And so in order to save face, Oscar believes that the only thing he can do is sue the Marcus of Queensbury for libel. Even though the accusations are true, Oscar believes his wit will come through and that he decides to prosecute this. And through this case, the Marcus of Queensbury decides to get everyone that Oscar's ever had any kind of relationship with to come up and besmirch his name and then eventually bring his own writings into it where Oscar will have to answer for the way he phrases things or how he describes love in his writings, even to the point where they ask him, what is the love that dare not speak his name? And he says, it's, it's the love an older man has for a younger man, almost a, a passionate, um, how would I describe it, almost a, a longing for what he, the younger man will get to see in his life and that the older man has already passed by. And they basically take all of that and use so much that Oscar's lawyer says, hey, we have to call this off, you're gonna lose now. And they call it off, but the state decides to try Oscar as a sexual offender, basically. And they go through three trials and Oscar is sentenced to two years of hard labor. Now Oscar then loses everything. He loses the ability to ever see his children again. He loses his freedom. And he loses the ability to write whenever he wants because while he's in hard labor jail, making bricks and doing manual labor, he's only allowed one sheet of paper per day to which he would end up writing one of my favorite writings. It's actually called De Profundis and the Ballad of Reading Jail. Oscar had brought so much shame to his family name that his wife was thrown out of a hotel for sharing the last name Wild. And she would go on to change her name and the kid's name to Holland. Oscar would never see the kids again. His wife, while he was in prison, would stand by him and constantly write him and did believe that his heart was purely devoted to her. However, after a few years, she would die in surgery, having a spinal surgery. And when Oscar would come out of prison, he would foolishly go live with Bosey for a short time. They quarreled constantly and then eventually left and Oscar would move here to Paris. See, he thought when he got out of prison that people would forget or it wouldn't be as big a news and that he could just go back to being a writer. But when he came out, nobody would accept him. And the newspapers in New York had written about him. They had written about him in London. His career was over. Here is where Oscar Wilde lies for eternity in Pierre Lachey. After Oscar moved to Paris, he really had nothing. He wasn't completely poor, but he didn't have much, and he would then reconnect with his very first male boyfriend, Robert, who would then financially help take care of Oscar for the rest of his life. And to Robert's credit, after Oscar passed away, he went out and he purchased all the rights back to all of Oscar's writing, and 
would spend the rest of his life trying to make the name Oscar Wilde have prominence once again, which it does. While in jail, Oscar realized that his life was pretty much over. He said that he realized that due to one vice, he would be judged on that forever and that nothing he ever did in his life would have any character and through that he would lose all rights to ever seeing his children, which he said was when his wife died, he knew any possibility of that ever happening again was completely lost. To me personally, Oscar Wilde is the most brilliant wordsmith and the most brilliant thinker that ever lived. He described things and thought things in a way that nobody else ever had, and if you've never understood his work or read his work, I can't recommend it enough. If you started with the writings that he made in prison, The Ballad of Reading Jail and De Profundis, which I actually brought my copy with me and it has a great story behind it I'll share with you when we get there. Those, I think, show his soul the most because part of De Profundis, it's almost two books in one. It's his understanding and acceptance of what happened with Bozy, with going to jail, accepting that it was his fault, that he put himself in that position. And then the other half, it's him realizing that he now has no life, he has no love. No, he said as long as he could lay on the grass and look up at the sun and have happiness in his heart, he would always have a reason to live. And he said it for one time, he no longer had that reason to live anymore. Now Robbie is also buried here in this cemetery, though I could not find really any information as to where he is. But if I can find him, I want to include him because, as I mentioned, he took care of Oscar at the end. When Oscar would be in his hotel and they were leaving him notes saying that they were going to sell his overcoat and two of his suits if he didn't pay, Robbie would send him the money. And actually, the hotel where Oscar passed away in the room has been unchanged. The hotel is still there. We're gonna go. Inside the room, I hope to someday get to stay in. Um, they have those letters to Oscar saying they were gonna sell his things if he didn't pay. And many writings inside the lobby, as well as a plaque to him outside. Now I think we're pretty close to him. Oscar felt at the end that he had lived with too much shame to return to Ireland or London and so he planned his burial here. Now one of the things that to me does put a little bit of a smile on my face is that Shortly before he died on his deathbed, they did allow him to be baptized a Catholic, which was his dream, the way his mother had. And by the way, to add insult to injury, his time in prison, his mother, whom he was so close to, also had passed away during that time and he couldn't go to the funeral. I can't believe I'm in Paris and I'm going to visit Oscar's grave. This is like a very spiritual moment for me. A lot of my, um, when I was unemployed, I got into reading books pretty hardcore and going to the library every day. And that's when I discovered F. Scott Fitzgerald's writing and Oscar Wilde. I remember reading a uh, picture of Dorian Gray first and just remember thinking how it was the perfect painting of how someone who lived on their own excesses could destroy themselves, and I always found it very insightful that it matched his own life. When I got into the picture of Dorian Gray, I had a friend who lived, he was actually in my apartment building at that time, named Len, and Len was just this great thinker, and Len had traveled all around the world and had seen things I had never gotten to see, but 
He was really proud that I was getting into so much literature at that time. So he walked down to my apartment one day and said, Jordan, I got this for you. I think you'll enjoy it. When I opened it up, he had written this letter to me. It said, Jordan, I saw a page of De Profundis in a glass case at the Morgan Library in New York City. The guards would only allow him to write a page a day. Some th somehow I thought of you, or somehow I thought you would appreciate that. Merry Christmas, 2005. Your friend, Len. Now, a few weeks later, I was doing a radio interview and I was reading this book on the bus on my way home from work to go do my radio interview. And as I come to a bus stop, I look off to the side and David Lynch is sitting there with a cow on a leash. I got off the bus, ran over to him, and this is the only thing I had on me. So he signed the back of my book. Now Oscar should be rather easy to find because much like Jim Morrison, so many people have come here and written things on his headstone and defaced it so many times and the family has to actually pay for that to be cleaned that they have surran surrounded it with um, glass. So we're looking for the glass. I've seen a couple like this where people have broken the doors open. That's pretty sad. Well, I found out I was on the completely opposite side of the cemetery, so now I'm in the right place. I know for sure I am. Well, for a man who wanted nothing more in life than beauty, acknowledgement, and to have his name known, I think, I think he, I think he got what he wanted in the end. The name Oscar Wilde will live on forever. The family name has never been changed back to Wilde, but Oscar, I think Oscar would have loved in modern times. He would have fit in perfectly. And right behind me is Oscar Wilde's final resting place. Wow. I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm paying respects to somebody who I'm just amazed by. Often people have that question of, if you could have a meal with three people, living or dead, who would they be? Number one on that list has always been Oscar Wilde. Number two, George Washington, and number three, Clark Gable. And today, you guys get to be with me when I get to meet who I think is the most fascinating, most misunderstood person of all time. Died in 1900. He was a brilliant mind, absolutely brilliant mind. There just aren't words that can describe the way he could phrase things. There aren't ways that I could describe, only he could do it justice. Wow, Oscar. Rest in peace, my friend. It's hard to imagine that somebody's comp entire life was ruined for something like, like what it was. The times, man, the times. They needed to make an example of somebody at that time and when Oscar was that man he was the perfect person to fit into that role everyone knew who he was now sadly when Oscar was sentenced they brought him out into the square and shackled him and put him in the prisoner's clothes and he said people laughed at him and spit at him and basically just completely humiliated him right there in the square. In the end Oscar was so poor that he would walk the streets of Paris and in one brief encounter he ran into one of the madams that he used to have tea with and talk intellectually 
speak of poetry, she describes him coming out of the shadows and saying, Madam, you may not remember me, but I used to be Oscar Wilde, and I'm about to do the most dreadful thing and ask you for money. She said she gave him the money, he mumbled thank you, and ran off in shame. Number one on my bucket list since I started reading Oscar Wilde has been to come here, pay my respects at his grave, go to the hotel, and stay in the room. And on this trip, I intend to do two out of those three things. Thank you, Lionhearts, for being with me on my favorite vlog. So now, the next stop on our Oscar Wilde tour here for today is, I wanna to go to Le Hotel. It's the hotel that Oscar Wilde spent his last days dying beyond his means, as he said to Robbie Ross. I wanna go see that, I have to see that. Then hopefully, we're gonna to go to a museum that's pretty close by there. And they're actually having an Oscar Wilde exhibit that ends next month. It's been going on since 2016. This is my only chance. Actually has some of his personal artifacts. I believe his Bible from when he was born that his mother signed and his birth certificate. Basilic Notre Dame. Now, like I said, I am not gonna do everything in Paris. I never have intended my life to explore Paris in one day. But if I have one day, I'm gonna focus it on one person. So my goal obviously would actually be to come back to France and kind of skip around like I did with Belgium, kind of hit different cities and then hit Paris in that trip again. Okay, we have to take the train over to our next two places, so we didn't have a choice. Way too far of a walk, I was told. So now we gotta switch trains. One more. Almost missed it. Oh yeah, it's Christmas. Wow, they're having a little Christmas market here. Perfect. See all that? And since we're right around the corner, I want you to start thinking right now. These are the exact same streets, same routes that Oscar Wilde would have taken when he would go out and about for the day and come back to his hotel. And this is right across the street from where he stayed. Now it's supposedly down here. Whew, that's an emotional experience for me. Well, in room 14, Oscar Wilde spent the last of his life here. As he would describe to Robbie, dying well beyond my means. And he would say, I'm fighting a duel to the death with the wallpaper. Either it goes or I go. And if you see right up here to the left, there's a placard memorializing Oscar. And there it is. Oscar Wilde, poet, dramatic, from Dublin, born October 15th, 1856. Look at that. He would have walked in this doorway. It had a different name at the time, and we'll see that when we go in. I'll appeal to these people's good nature and see if they might allow me to film some, but right there you can see, it says Oscar Wilde. So believe it or not, they are cool enough to let me walk through. They said that there's some stuff of his in here. So here's actually a letter in French that Oscar wrote while he lived here. Here's the first part of it, so you can see his name right there. And then that's, that's his handwriting. He was writing it to this hotel. And then on the other side of the Christmas tree is the other side of the letter. See? His actual handwriting. Amazing. But I really just wanted to come in here because now we get the idea of what he would have walked through. Look at that. His room would have been up there. Here's the lobby and then here's the... Let's take a look. The bar. They actually have... This is Oscar on his deathbed. If you, 
I've seen that picture online. And then it's that one. one of the leaf of the um, deathbed. And that's the leaf from his deathbed. Yeah. Wow. Now we're gonna go. Wow. Unbelievably cool of them. When I told them how far I came and that this was on my bucket list and everything, all they said was they said, unfortunately a lot of the stuff's still up in his room, so you have to rent the room to see that, but we can show you what they showed me. The picture from his deathbed and the leaf from the deathbed and then the letter that he was writing in two parts. Well, I'm trying my hardest to get over to the museum. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. There's no quick way there. And unfortunately, when the, it says when I'm gonna get there, it's gonna close in 15 minutes, but I might still do it anyway. I'd like to see it. Hey gang, we're in Paris! Ha! You see that light? Eiffel Tower. Well, isn't that beautiful? Boat coming under the bridge right under the Eiffel Tower. Well, we got here with 20 minutes to spare. Let me see if they'll let me in. Well, unfortunately, this is where Oscar's collection is on display. But they said I was three minutes too late. They said they wouldn't let me in, so I can't go see it. I'm sorry, guys. However, I was really happy that at Le Hotel I got to see his handwriting. And that's mainly what I wanted to see here, so I'm pretty happy. I think we'll end this vlog over at the Eiffel Tower and we'll call it a night for Oscar Wilde. Christmas light overload. The whole street. Oh wow, that's the Dior store. Look at all those hot air balloons. Well done. Almost there! That's a Champs-Elysees. Look, it's glittering now. That just all of a sudden started. I don't know what's going on. I can't wait to get over there and see it. Well, we made it. If I get any closer, I don't think you'll be able to see too much of the Eiffel Tower, but I made it. So we're gonna call it an end of the vlog here. The Oscar Wilde vlog, my bucket list vlog, my bucket list experience. And if you learn nothing else, I hope that you take with you a little story out of this and realize that Sometimes people are just different. Doesn't make them good, doesn't make them bad. They're just different. In his case, he's a man who prided himself on falling for temptation, and it would soon be his downfall. From Paris, France, have a great night. Goodbye.